Story continued from Patagon Titan episode. Silence falls over the mountain pass as the last of the Patagon Titan herds have moved through on their annual migration. The Tyranno Titan have succeeded in sending multiple Patagon Titan falling over the sheer cliffs to the gorge, the giant sauropods falling to their deaths. In the days since, the 12 meter predators have been casually feeding on the immense carcasses of the fallen herbivores in the bottom of the gorge, known as the ravine. Few other forms of life ever enter this place, not just because of the dozens of Tyrannotitan feeding, resting and patrolling the area. This region is mostly barren, with little rainfall throughout the year and direct sunlight only piercing through for a short amount of time of the day. The terrain is also rocky and dangerous, but under the moonlight at the entrance of the ravine, a newcomer is cautiously making his way into the hostile place. Drawn by the smell of tons of dead flesh is a Geniodectes. This six meter predator usually goes after small dinosaurs and has never ventured into this intimidating place. But hunger pushes him forward, despite the fact that he knows that this is where the huge Tyrannotitan disappear every single year. The Geniodectes tentatively walks through the dark ravine, guided by his strong sense of smell. However, there isn't just one path through the rocky terrain, and the medium-sized carnivore knows that every corner could hide one of the large Tyrannotitan. The massive Carcharodontids are twice his length, and ten times his weight. And back in their usual habitats, Geniodectes are sometimes preyed upon by even young Tyrannotitan. The hunter pushes on, however, his footsteps on the rocky ground echoing against the high ravine walls. The smell of the dead sauropods continues to get stronger the further he goes. So much so, it's practically all the Geniodectes can smell. He stops for a moment to stretch his neck, when he picks up a low sound. Turning his head slightly, the Geniodectes freezes when he sees the source. Lying completely still only a few meters away is one of the Tyrannotitan. The giant is asleep, its slow breathing the only thing giving it away. But being so close to one is enough to make the Genudecti's heart skip a few beats. Not wanting to disturb the larger predator, the Genudecti's carefully continues forward. Fortunately, the Tyranno Titan doesn't even stir. But when the nervous carnival rounds the corner, he experiences a whole new level of horror. This section is more open, but across the ground are over 30 Tyranno Titan. All of them are deep in slumber each with a fair amount of space between each other, and all now fat from feasting for days. The Geniodectes is frozen in place, he has never seen anywhere near this many Tyrannotitan all in one place, and instinct tells him to turn and leave, but just beyond the sleeping predators is the reason for their gathering. Under the dim light of the stars are the enormous bodies of the two Patigo Titan, broken and flattened where they fell. Though dead and half eaten, they dwarf even the sleeping Tyrannotitan, and despite the large carnivores glutting themselves on the sauropod's flesh, there is still plenty of meat remaining. Instinct tells him to flee, but hunger tells him to try his luck. One cautious step at a time, the Genudectes slowly moves towards his goal, moving between the unconscious super predators. Almost all of them are fully grown, and even when asleep, they radiate a sense of power and terror. The Geniodectes has to walk right past some of their jaws, and even steps over one's tail. If the smell was strong before, now it was suffocating, mixed in with the Tyrannotitan's own pungent scent. There was also the insects. Swarms of them were buzzing over the carcasses, eating the flesh or laying eggs in them. Even the ground moves as flightless invertebrates scurried in all directions, as the Geniodectes tentatively sneaked forward. It was a snail's pace, but with the drowning noise of the insects covering his steps, the terrified carnivore finally made it past the sleeping Tyrannotitans. The entire group had barely stirred, because for the past few days the large carnivores have been continually returning to the carcasses and eating till they could barely walk, and then laying down to sleep. Allowing their bodies to digest and build up as much fat as possible along the high spines of their backs. 
In this state, the Genyodectes may have stepped on one of them, and it might not have woken up. With the giants behind him, the hungry Genyodectes moved to the vacant Patagotitan bodies. Both of the 30 meter long bodies had been mostly eaten, but the Genyodectes didn't need to eat as much as the Tyrannotitan, and his teeth were built different so he could target different parts of the carcasses that even the mighty Tyrannotitans would struggle with. What he bit into was crawling with flying insects, their eggs or their larva. It didn't matter to him, he pulled slab after slab of meat from the bones and swallowed it down eagerly. This is the first decent meal the male has had in weeks, and this is the only reason he came into this dangerous place. What he doesn't know is he is the only member of his species to do so in over a decade. Most are simply too afraid to venture into the ravine, and even fewer make it out. Though the best parts of the carcass were long gone, it didn't matter to the Genyodectes, as he was still spoiled for choice, as there were parts that the Tyrannotitan's large skulls couldn't reach, but the smaller Genyodectes could access. He was so busy feeding, he didn't notice the sun starting to rise, triggering someone to awaken. The Tyrannotitan closest to him began to stir, opening her eyes and lifting her head up. The Genyodectes froze again, realizing he was stuck with the Patagotitan body in front of him, and nothing between himself and the huge predator. The female Tyrannotitan opened her jaws and yawned widely, baring her serrated teeth towards the sky. She could obviously see the Genyodectes standing by the Patagotitan corpse, covered in blood. The female shook her head twice, and after a few seconds of staring at the intruder, flopped her head back onto the ground and went back to sleep. The Genyodectes was stunned. Normally, these colossal predators will violently chase off anything that interacts with their kills, but then again, this is the only time they hunt in such numbers, or even sleep close to each other. Being forced into the ravine changes their behavior, and since there is still so much food around, perhaps it's not worth getting up to chase off a scavenger. The Genyodectes doesn't test his luck, however. He moves deeper into the ravine, away from the snoozing super predators. There are other Patagotitan corpses here as well, and the safest bet would be to stay hidden until the Tyrannotitan have eaten all they can, and move back to their home territories. Not long that is when the Genyodectes will return as well, back to being the underdog in a land of giants. Hello fellow travelers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down one of the last of the Ceratosaurs, Geniodectes. Geniodectes was first discovered in 1901 and was found in the Chibut province of Argentina and was the only theropod dinosaur known from South America till the 70s. So what remains have been found? The answer is barely any and consists of an incomplete snout. These include the premaxillae, portions of both maxillas, the right and left entery, many teeth, a fragment of the left spillenal, and parts of the superdentaries. Not only is there little to go off, but what we do have is poorly preserved, and some parts are in articulation. Even categorizing what family it belonged to is difficult, with it being labeled as a megalosaurid, a tyrannosaurid, and even an abelosaurid. In 2004, more studies were done on the snout and it was concluded that Geniodectes belonged to the Ceratosauridae family, with it possibly evolving from Ceratosaurus or a close relative. To quote the scientist Rahut, who did the study, Geniodectes differs from all theropods with the possible exception of Ceratosaurus, in that the premaxillary teeth are arranged in an overlapping N echelon pattern, and the longest maxillary tooth crowns are longer apicobasally, than the minimal dorsal orbital depth of the mandible, but differs from Ceratosaurus in the presence of four as opposed to three premaxillary teeth. The name Geniodectes means jawbite, from the Greek words genius, jaw, and dectis, bite. Despite the limited remain, a study in 2016 calculated Geniodectes to grow 6.2 meters long and weigh 790 kilograms. It lived alongside giants such as Chibutosaurus, an 18-meter sauropod, Patagotitan, one of the largest sauropods to have ever lived, and Tyrannotitan, one of the largest theropods to have ever lived. 
Though we have nowhere near a complete picture of their ecosystem, Geniodectes lived amongst giants, and though it was likely still an active and dangerous carnivore, it was dwarfed by its neighbours. Which seems to be a theme with ceratosaurs, large carnivores that never quite get to the top of the food chain. So unfortunately we know next to nothing for certain about Geniodectes, other than that it was a theropod and that it did indeed exist. Despite that, Mattel has released a Geniodectes toy for their Jurassic World line. I don't know why, I think some other species deserve a toy more, but hey, at least they're picking lesser known species. Kind of like myself. Sorry for the shorter facts section of this video, but there wasn't a lot to discuss, and I did write a bit of a longer narrative section for good old Geniodectes. But what do you think of it? And for my question of the week, what species do you think Mattel should make into a toy? What lesser known dinosaur would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.